We've got a very interesting development here for Verizon Wireless, and I'm really excited about this. I've been tracking the CBRS network build for Verizon for a couple of years, so it's not really new to me. To some of you, it may be, and then obviously it kind of depends on your market, and Verizon holds licenses in different frequencies. But this is this is pretty big, and what Verizon can do with it in these places is going to really be a game changer for their 5g ultra wideband network so let me give you guys some of the technical stuff let me explain what it means to you as a consumer and then in terms of like industry-wide what it actually kind of means all right so here's the title of the article and it's from the verizon wireless uh news center verizon to expand 5g ultra wideband availability using cbrs spectrum all right so let's start first with exactly like what the technicals are all right, for those of you that are not really sure what this is, CBRS is a cellular band that is composed of 150 megahertz of the 3.5 gigahertz frequency. Now you note here that it says shared spectrum, and that's because this spectrum is actually, I guess, owned and operated by the DOD, and they have priority. So whenever they need to utilize this these frequency, I guess we'll call them blocks or whatever, it's going to down power and I guess, I don't know how to explain it, but they get priority, I suppose, over like the carriers that actually use it for like cellular operations. So it's not the best of situations when it comes to mobile network operators, but it's a really nice supplement that actually like in Verizon's case is really important. All right. So the way that the sharing works is you have tier one incumbents. This would be the DOD. And then after that is tier two. Uh, which is called Priority Access Licenses. For the rest of this video, we'll call them PALS. These are licenses in this frequency that carriers bid on in a spectrum auction. And in the case of CBRS, it's in 10 megahertz blocks. Verizon has, I think, the top 50 or whatever PAs, the markets, they have spectrum licenses in CBRS. Now it's band 48 LTE currently. I'll come back to that importance, but they have 30 to 40 megahertz in like 50 or so markets. Cleveland, the CLE market, mine, uh, being one of them where they have 30 megahertz. In some places, they have 40. There's also a version of CBRS, which is their t uh, the tier three, which is called GAA or General Authorized Channels. These are the unlicensed version of CBRS. Now, literally in this priority, tier one the DOD, tier two, which is PALS, access licenses, and then tier three, which is general access. That's unlicensed. Anyone can use the general access stuff. So unlicensed means it's first come, first serve. And then companies like Verizon, T-Mobile, AT&T, they can do a combination of tier two and tier three if they want to. In fact, Verizon does that here. They have 30 megahertz of license spectrum, and then they can do additional you know, spectrum blocks. So for example, they got the 30 megahertz, plus they can do 10, 20, 30, 40 additional megahertz, the 10 megahertz sub blocks. They can combine them. So they could put 70 megahertz on air of CBRS. By the way, that makes it really fast. When I connect to a lot of the spectrum here, like all these small cells and stuff where I see the CBRS, you can get like seven, 800 megabits per second downlink. All right, so that's like the technical aspect of things, right? Now let's circle back. Why this is important. Currently in its iteration, all the gear, the radio gear, the, the antennas, the radios that we've been seeing going up have been operating band 48 CBRS, the 3.5 gigahertz spectrum. We've been seeing it as LTE. The reason that's important is because LTE on Verizon is a heavily managed network set of channels. You're going to get four megabits per second for your video. So you're getting like 720p, right? You're not going to get unthrottled experience like you do on the 5G ultra wideband. What Verizon is going to start doing is they're going to be moving CBRS over to N48, which means the gear that's going to be installed is going to be 5G enabled. So that means CBRS becomes part of the 5G ultra wideband portfolio. So that means millimeter wave, the hot, really, really high frequencies like N260, N261, like 28 gigahertz and uh, 39 gigahertz. You have the millimeter wave, plus you have the C-band, the 3.7 gigahertz. Now we're going to have the 3.5 gigahertz CBRS also used 
as part of the ultra wideband branding. So this is pretty awesome. Uh, this is going to be really, really big for markets where Verizon already has a CBRS footprint. And it's also going to be big in places that haven't got it yet that could be getting the 5G enabled gear for CBRS. So here's what I'm seeing in Cleveland and in other markets like mine, we are seeing Verizon put up all types of C-band gear, the N77. They're also putting CBRS gear. As those upgrades are ongoing, you're going to have the ability to see Verizon do carrier aggregation where they combine CBRS and N77, the C-band. So that would be N77 plus N48 to make a pretty capacitive network experience. And because it's not going to be LTE anymore, and it's going to move over to N48 5G NR, it's going to be unthrottled experience like N77 C-band. This is huge. This is big time. If Verizon has 60 megahertz of N77 plus 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 megahertz of N48, we're talking about probably somewhere in the neighborhood of anywhere between 100 to 140 or 150 megahertz of mid-band 5G, along with whatever the LTE you know, um, anchor could be there if it's just that, looks like N48 and LTE or whatever. However, they decide to do this, and, and we'll know more about this at the end of the year with the standalone network core when they start combining 5G and our carry aggregation, the potential is huge. And by the way, by the time this is happening, Verizon is continuing to build out N77 more places, you know, a deeper build with more coverage. And um, they're also going to start to see in 2023 all their spectrum for N77, the entire uh, portfolio of C-band you know, go full throttle with their spectrum licenses. So they're not going to be restricted to 60 megahertz of N77. We're going to see 140, 160, 180 megahertz. We might see three carrier aggregation with a 100 megahertz band 77, uh, an additional 60 megahertz of N77 plus the CBRS. That would be 100 plus 60 plus an additional 30. We might see 190, 200, 220 megahertz of mid-band 5G carrier aggregating along with uh, anything else that they might be doing, which who knows what, what those little tricks could be up their sleeves with standalone 5G. Guys, this is going to be huge. It's going to be huge for places that have CBRS. It's going to be huge for places with N77 as well as N48. I am so excited about this as a market that has a CBRS build. This is big time. This is major. Uh, the, the only restriction... Right, and I probably should have mentioned this before. N seventy seven C band is a full power macro band, meaning it it reaches really far. It's it's really like AWS, which is band sixty six. It reaches multiple miles. CBRS is not like that. It has a power restriction because of the DoD and the rules that are in place for the CBRS. It has a much lower EIRP, a much lower wattage for power. So it's it's going to be limited in its reach. I'd say a half mile to a mile is more realistic. Meanwhile, N77 is probably a multiple mile type uh, you know, frequency because of the power level. So it's not going to be game changing for everybody. It's going to be huge for a lot of people, right? Especially in places where Verizon has some really tight network grids like here in Cleveland. But uh, it's going to be a difference maker for a lot of people. Just maybe not as substantial nationally as one would see the N77, for example. Anyways, the, I, I discussed a lot of stuff. If you have questions about this or you want to comment on any of this stuff, I know it's kind of technical. Let me know if you need any type of clarifications, you got questions, or if you have other insights and opinions on this. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Go ahead and voice uh, your opinions and comments down below in the comment section. Love to hear what you have to say. You are the voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard. Like, share, and subscribe for more. Uh, turn on the bell, uh, the bell notifications icon to never miss an upload. I'll link this article in the description box too, by the way. Also in the description box, my Twitter handle and uh, my Patreon page is there. If you want to support us and get early access to content and exclusive videos not found anywhere else, links for my Gmail address down for business inquiries. Thanks for watching. See you all in the next video. Peace.